Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. Welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. A busy week in the Elite League. Here's what we've got coming up for you on tonight's show. The Cardiff Devils new signing impresses in his Elite League debut. The battle for top spot continues. It's a crucial weekend for the Panthers and the Giants. And a Scottish derby. A bit of Murrayfield magic as the Capitals leave the bottom of the Elite Ice Hockey League. Well, folks, those Edinburgh Capitals and the Five Flyers, they keep winning games, and the Dundee Stars and the Hall Stingray as well. They're looking over their shoulders. More on that a little bit later. You'll see that I'm uh, joined by the Nottingham Panthers assistant coach, Rick Strachan. Good to have you back as uh, always, Strax. And since the last time you've come here, everything has just got so much tighter, hasn't it? The Gardner Conference tighter, the Urquhart tighter and of course the elite league tighter top to bottom it's it's been interesting and busy times yeah we expected that uh last time we talked we said it was going to be a, a tight battle all the way and you know teams that uh, were struggling earlier have picked it up and, and made it tighter and tighter and you know both conferences uh, upper grabs the league title upper grabs so it's, it's good for hockey right now anybody surprised you or any team surprised you doing better than you thought or perhaps not as good as you thought well i, I thought fife you know started out very strong struggled and they picked it up. Uh, Edinburgh struggled from the beginning in the last four, you know, three or four weeks. They picked it up and started to put this, uh, together some pretty impressive victories and, and some big scalps, as we know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dundee is, uh, is battling along and, and doing well. So, you know, Bray had probably the only team that I'm really surprised with the struggles they've had. Because at the start of the year when we spoke, we all thought Brayhead were going to be challenging for the top spot. Now they're struggling to be the top spot in their own conference. Yeah, they've, they've had some injuries and, you know, some player changes and they just can't, uh, you know, get things uh, stable there and, you know, get a, get a full roster and, and then play to their potential. One team that is playing to the potential right now is your own club, Nottingham. Great wins as we'll see in the show coming up. What's changed there? Because at the moment there just seems to be the Panthers machine just rolling. Yes, they hiccup against Edinburgh, but every time you, every time you see Nottingham, they're playing well, scoring goals. Confidence must be high. Confidence is very high. Uh, we just don't rely on one person. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a goal scorer and struggling. There's uh, six other guys who are going to put the puck in the net for us. And you know, we've got a real balanced attack. Our goaltending's been outstanding. You know, our defense has, has been as good as it's ever been. You were telling me before the start of the show, Benedict Clark, two of you like senior guys, are actually something like seventh and eighth in your team scoring. It just shows the depth you've got in scoring. Is that perhaps the biggest difference between Nottingham and maybe Belfast, Cardiff, Coventry, Sheffield, that you've just got scoring in every line that you've got? Yeah, we, you know, Corey did a good job of putting together, you know, nine guys that can score. Uh, you can teach guys to check, but you can't teach guys to score. And, you know, and we got 10 guys who, who can put the puck in the net, and it doesn't matter who's scoring as long as someone's scoring. It is indeed. Right, Belfast. Odyssey Arena. Last Friday, while you were watching this show, the Cardiff Devils were in town. Paul Bissonnette's farewell tour before he returned back to North America. It was a must-win game for Doug Christensen's team. Chris Ellis, did they pull it off? The Devils in the Odyssey Arena gave a debut to new signing Jesse Gimblet, and he scored 249 into that debut, touching in a move from Hill and Davis. 1-0 Cardiff then, in the early stages of the first period. Fournier skated in from behind the net and out in front, an 11th goal of the year, and that levelled the game up. But 1-1, one, one. that wasn't the end of the scoring. You see the teddy bear toss starting there. The Giants, not the only club on that weekend to raise money and get teddies for charity. Out in front, the rebound there for Mason, a fourth goal of the year for him, and that made the game 2-1 to so the Belfast Giants. They had turn things around. Now Mason's scoring there, but then he's involved in an incident. It was a check to the head there, and that ended up with a three-match ban. 
for the Belfast Giants defenseman. So we see some players pair off. Colbert there getting to grips with Gimblet. Certainly a bit of excitement in the Odyssey Arena. And the Cardiff Devils' new boy certainly making an impact on his Devils debut. So that at the stage was 2-1. And it was a one-goal game, so really it could have gone anywhere. The player who is just laid out on the ice, Chris Blight. And then we have Michael Hicks explaining his decision to Doug Christensen. Wasn't too happy with it, but he had to go, did Mason, and he played no further part in the game and subsequently had a three-match ban. Didn't seem to trouble Belfast, though. Terrific goal from Garside, coming out the corner and out in front. That's the third goal of the year for him. Lloyd and Champagne setting that one up, and Belfast have a two-goal advantage in the third period. They gambled, they pulled the netminder, and into an empty net, Scott Champagne wrapped the game up for the Giants. Final score in the Odyssey, Belfast four, Cardiff one. A good start for the weekend then for Doug Christiansen and an important victory. Cardiff are nibbling at the heels, aren't they, uh, of that first spot? But the Belfast Giants, they're pretty convincing winners at the end. Yeah, they, they, they did what it took uh, to win at home. Uh, they're a very explosive team. As you see, you know, Mason, uh, they get that fourth defenseman jumping into the rush all the time and picking up rebounds and burying them. No sand drop for the Belfast Giants. They perhaps went on to miss him later in the weekend. They didn't seem to miss him on Friday night. No, they didn't miss him. Uh, he's, a, he's probably a t one of the top th three defensemen in the league. They miss him on the power play, all special teams. Plays a ton of minutes for him. Uh, you know, he's one of their studs. Cardiff, we talk about Bissonnette. He's now flown back to uh, North America, still to be seen whether he returns, of course. He's made an impact on the Cardiff double season, though, hasn't he? He's, he's certainly been well worth every penny they paid him. Yeah, when, the day he showed up, they, they started playing well. They started winning. They had some confidence. He's a big guy with really soft hands. I was surprised how, you know, what skill he had for a, for a big man, and uh, he put up some big numbers for him. Devin Didiamita departed as well. His replacement, Gimblet, got off to a good start. If we just turn around and uh, have a look, uh, open the scoring for the uh, Cardiff Devils. <laughs> yeah, a big he, fella, isn't he? Well, he does right now. It's like any good goal scorer. He goes to the net, gets a stick on it, a little lucky, tips it in the net, and, uh, you know, that's a, everybody who start their first game seems to score a goal. Big talking point, though. This hit from Mason on Blight. Caused a little bit of afters, and Gimblet getting involved there, sticking up for his teammates. Yeah, right here, he's a big guy, 6'2", 210, and he's not afraid to, to drop his gloves and throw them. And you can see him right here. He knows what he's doing. He's going to come over the top with a big haymaker right there and uh, sit down, Mr. Belfast. Let's take a look at it again. Three-game suspension for Mason for that hit. Right, call? Yeah, the new rules. Uh, I don't like the rules, but... Uh, if you make contact, first point of entry, you know, first point that you hit is the head, you're going to get a match penalty in three games. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't think he meant to hit him in the head, but he did. Uh, keep your head up and you won't get hit like that. Yeah. Talk to us about the Odyssey at the moment and, and the team that Doug Christensen's got. It's a different side to last year. It looks very mechanical, very methodical, where perhaps your own team plays with a certain freedom and offensive flair. It's a very disciplined... It's, it's, is that the strength to the Belfast Giants, that their discipline, their structure, their systems? Yeah, they, 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 they won last year playing the same system. Uh, Doug has them playing a certain way, and, you know, they like, they're, they're, they, look, they like to have a high forward and have their D very active. Their fourth defenseman loves to jump into the play. Uh, you know, they got some quality hockey players. Uh, you know, sure, they've lost a game here and a game there, but by no means are they out of it. Not at all. The Belfast Giants, very dangerous. They've got big games as well coming up over the Christmas period. Let's flip forward then to Saturday. We go up to the Hull Ice Arena. Strax was going back to former territory with his Nottingham Panthers. Who's going to come out on top of this one, Chris? This game was feisty from the off. The incident here started by Graham. He got thrown out for that for boarding. But then the players got involved from both sides. Beckett got a roughing penalty. Graham added a roughing penalty to his list of pims. Andre roughing as well. And Smith here, who pairs off with Graham, goes for third man in. The two of them go toe-to-toe -to -toe for a short while. But that wasn't the end of the fighting, actually. Here we see a chance in front of the net for the Nottingham Panthers. And Lovedell getting involved there, but Ling's having none of that. Skates in, and those two have a bit of a tussle. They go and they have to sit down as well with fighting majors in the first period. With that first period coming to a close, Francis picks up the puck in his own zone and he goes coast to coast.
after a terrific finish and Nottingham led at the end of period one. 18.04 gone and a 14th goal of the year for Francis and Nottingham had their noses in front. In period two, they went on the power play and this goal is well worked. Werner having it on the right-hand side. Benedict and Fox involved as well and on his debut, Kelsey Wilson. He only flew into the country on Friday morning and on Saturday evening he scores his first Nottingham Panthers goal. So the Panthers, after two periods, were leading by two goals to nil and seemingly on their way to a victory. But we still had 25 minutes left in the game. So to period three and the response at the start of that was instant by the Stingrays. Dooley's fourth goal of the year there, 53 seconds into period three. It's a one goal game and things are very much alive in the whole arena. Kowalski beaten by a deflection, the Nottingham Panthers have some tense times to see if they can hold on. Power play again for the Panthers. This time Ling and Weaver get the assist and Fox redirects the puck into the back of the net. That was the end of the scoring and Nottingham Panthers number 44, Jordan Fox there, scoring his seventh goal of the season. Final score in Hull, the Stingrays one, Nottingham Panthers three. The Nottingham Panthers then victorious against the Hull Stingrays and when, when, when will teams learn that if you give David Ling all that time and space he's going to do damage to you, isn't he, Vic? He's got outstanding vision and he can pass the puck, shoot it hard. Uh, you know, Like any of the superstars in this league, if you give them time and space, they're going to kill you. Ling started off pretty well, didn't he? Then had a bit of a slow patch, but then every week now we're seeing more and more of him in more and more crucial situations, performing, delivering. Panthers happy with him? Yeah, we're extremely happy with David Ling. Uh, you know, he can score, he, he can check, he, he, you can see he can throw him if he has to. Uh, he's the full package and, uh, you know, he's what our team needed. He's a character. Yeah, what was that game like in the hole? He, he, obviously, the scoreline was fairly tight, but you looked like you were, you were in control for the most. Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough game. Hull's a tough place to play. We expect it to be low scoring, you know, some, a couple fights. Uh, you know, we had to keep our composure and, and you know, we, we had to work very hard to get the victory. You talk about a couple of scraps. Let's just take a look at them. I thought Graham was a little bit unlucky here as he uh, got the initial penalty. He got kicked out for this, didn't he? Yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. He's a big guy and he gets matched up against a smaller guy. He just leans on him and he falls very awkward into the boards and, you know, Smith does what he's supposed to do is come, you know, come to the rescue of his player and him and Graham get into a, a bit of a battle here that uh, kind of carries over longer than it should have. But, uh, you know, hey, Graham got the five in the game for, for boarding, but it's unfortunate. While we watch the fight, he seems to be coming into his own as a player as well, Graham. He's, his productivity, well, actually, we'll talk about Graham in a second, is here's Ling again, never slow to get involved. No, you know, he sees a teammate in trouble and he jumps right in there and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a little guy but he's extremely strong and uh, he knows his way. He, he's had a few fights in his career and you can see that he knows what he's doing. Just, just jumping back quickly onto Graham again, his point productivity has increased as well. He seems to have settled in and now performing as you would have wanted right off the bat. Yeah, he started out, uh, you know, a very, not very slowly, but slowly, you know, by his standards and yeah. uh, over the last month uh, he's on a three-point a night tear and he's just ripping it up. It's worrying for the other nine teams. The Nottingham Panthers haven't had their November slip-up and they are rolling right now. Surely favourites for that first Elite League title in how many years? When we come back, another team that hasn't won the Elite League, the Cardiff Devils, they were taking on the Brayhead clan. Brayhead had really been struggling on the road. Could they overturn it in the big blue tent? Chris will tell us after this break. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Let's get straight into action. Big blue tent in Cardiff. We say it week in, week out. The toughest place to go. So when the Brayhead clan turned up with just 11 skaters, well, surely they had one arm tied behind their back. It was going to be an uphill battle, wasn't it, Chris? 
The clan are up against things at the moment. If it's not injuries, it's players pulling out of contracts or personal situations. Not a time then to go to one of the form teams. The Devils have not lost in regulation in their last six home matches and they went into the lead in the first period. McRae and Marsh combining well to set up Phil Hill for his eighth goal of the season. When you are short benched and they had just 11 outskaters, the clan, you really don't need to be taking penalties. This goal of five on three power play for Blight, an 11th goal of the year, that was 2 0. And coming back from that was always going to be an uphill task. Here it is a five on four power play. Once more, there seems so much room on the ice, even in these small big blue tents. And right on the doorstep there, Johnny on the spot, McRae, an 18th goal of the season for him. It's 3 0, and surely that was game out of sight for the visitors. But they did battle. They had 27 shots on goal throughout the game, compared to Cardiff's 39 and they did find a way through. Good move on the netminder by Robert Farmer and their 11th goal of the season for him. So that brought it back to 3-1. So maybe a fight back but just as they were trying to get things going it's overturned and coming forward the right hand side is McRae and then to the left hand side. Lovely goal from him. That's 4-1 and coming to the close of the second period. The Devils have a three-goal advantage. To period three now, and Bissonnet now 21 points in 11 games he's got. Now, of course, going back to North America. But Bissonnet has been a fine servant for the Cardiff Devils in the game that he's been there. That was a good finish from Blight, a second of the game for him. And a final score of Cardiff 5, Brayhead 1. I like the Brayhead clan. I love Jordan Kristanovic. I think he's one of the hardest working players in the league. I'd have him in any team of mine. But I tell you what, when you turn up to Cardiff with 11 players, you get what you deserve and you got a 5-1 thumping. And Rick, you just can't go into the big blue tent with 11 skaters, can you? You can't go into any building with 11 mm. skaters. Uh, it's just too mm. tough. And uh, for whatever reason, the, the Brayheads clan are playing short. We know they had one guy not show up, but uh, you got to do your best to go and you know, bring some kids in, get some kids some nice time. You got you to gotta show up with the full squad if you want to compete at this level. On this show before, we've talked about Haywood and Walker and their improvement, especially Haywood's improvement. But we see there, Chris, talk about uh, Farmer with 11 goals. He's been a great signing for them. Um, and he just seems to get better and better, that lad. He's a big kid. He works extremely hard. He goes to the net. He's got a decent shot. Uh, he gets better and better every year. Every game he gets better. And he, he's scoring some highlight goals. Mm -hmm. And Cardiff, they, just, well, they were always going to win that game, I feel. But um, up front... Just talk to me about McRae, because we always talk about Rabir, or we talk about Faulkner, or we talk about Blight. We always kind of forget Stuart McRae, yet every year he just delivers, and he's already hit, you know, 20 goals. One of the most complete hockey players in the league. Uh, he does it every night. He kills penalties for him. He, I think he leads the league in shorthanded goals. Uh, he's their captain, their leader. Uh, he can score big goals. He, he's great defensively. He's just a complete hockey player that everybody overlooks. Everybody overlooks and everybody would want on their team another one, Stuart McRae. Right, let's get to the Sheffield Arena. The Steelers were at home against the Dundee Stars. It was the first of what was supposed to be a back-to-back -back series between the Steelers and the Stars. Let's see how this one ended up, Chris. The Steelers had a bit of making up to do to their fans after the previous week's home defeat by Edinburgh. And of course, Dundee, well, when they last came to Sheffield in November, they came close to a win. Only a late goal saw the game go to overtime, and then a penalty shot in that extra period won it for the Steelers. But this time out, a break by them, early doors in period two, a shorthanded goal for Stevenson, a fifth of the year. Looked like he was going to shoot a clever play by him, Gertsen and Limbright getting the assist, 1-0 to the home side. But then Limbright gave the puck away and Christian Harper scored his third goal of the season to level the game, just coming up to the midway point. And was it going to be deja vu? Nervous times then, and maybe thoughts were going back to Edinburgh the previous weekend. But no worries, 90 seconds later, Limpright makes amends. He's involved in this good move, and Gertsen jumps onto the play. A tenth of the year, time of the goal, 30 minutes and 55 seconds, and the Steelers are back in front against the Dundee Stars. It's a good move there from Gertsen, and on the backhand, he flips the puck. It goes near side, past Riepel, Statistically, the best netminder in the league. He's the only one in the 92% safe bracket. Here we go then, some feistiness 
Shots on goal there by the Steelers from Michelle and Thomas. And then it boils over a little bit. Harper getting some minor penalties here. And also Tyler Michelle. Never really more than push and shove. Certainly brought a bit of excitement to the game that was at that stage only a one-goal game. And could the Steelers hang on or could Dundee come back? Well, you see here an empty net situation. The initial shot is missed, but watch how Ferguson uses his strength to get that puck and gives it to Savage, and it's a win for the Steelers. They take the two points. Sheffield three, Dundee Stars one. Well, the Sheffield Steelers made hard work of that. That final goal coming with just one second remaining on the clock. And uh, I think, as we both found out, to our peril, you know, if you come up against a hot goaltender, say like the Edinburgh guy, um, in getting those two victories for Edinburgh over Sheffield and over Nottingham, Riopel as well, he's probably the most important player to any elite league team right now. He keeps Dundee in every game, as he did there. Yes, uh, very solid goaltender, great resume. No one really knew a lot about him, but I did a little homework on him and just you know, looked him up and uh, wherever he's gone, he's been successful. And uh, to be successful in this league, especially in ice hockey, you've got to have a good goaltender. And if you have got a good goaltender and a goalie who can keep you in it, then if you've got a little bit of offence up front and Dundee have, that's where they have had the success. They were without Reinen on, uh, on Saturday night and perhaps if he'd have been there, it would have been even a closer game and maybe they'd have taken something out of this. Yeah, your goaltender uh, you know, will frustrate the other team. They start taking chances, and next thing you know, they're all over you, and they can't score, and the guys get frustrated, break their system, and then all of a sudden, you know, a little breakdown, and the team goes down and scores, and we've seen that story before. Mm -hmm. You and I have got a little thing with goaltenders. I think when we first started doing this show, Dundee had one that we, we didn't like. This Riopel, is he another J.F. Peraz? Is he another Zemlak? By that, I mean a guy who can play really well on one of the lower-placed teams, but then can't make the move up. Because I get the feeling with this kid, he's actually a guy who could start for any of the ten. Oh, he's fundamentally strong guy. Uh, he he faces a lot of a uh, lot of shots. He's got a high save percentage, but uh, can he handle the pressure? And is that the big difference between playing for, with all due respect, as Peraz did in Edinburgh or as Zemlak did in Fife, and then going to play for a Belfast and Nottingham, a Sheffield or Cardiff? Well, when I mean, you go from to the, you know, the top teams, they expect to win the championship and there's a little added pressure on a goaltender and some can handle it and some can't. Time for a break. When we come back, we'll go to the Sky Dome Arena in Coventry. It was a goal fest there as they were taking on the fight flight. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Let's head over to the Sky Dome Arena. The Coventry Blaze taking on the Five Flyers. Good news for Paul Thompson's team as well. Mike Bayrak return to their lineup. The Flyers have struggled on the road this season, whereas the Blaze are great at home. And that's one of the reasons why they are in contention for the league title at this part of the season. The first goal of the night went the home side's way. A poor rebound to give up by the netminder Pitten. And Cameron scores a ninth goal of the season. So that was 1-0 at the end of the first period. But then a giveaway there by Shoot, Very out of character and breaking down the ice. Well, Keller first of all to Pitten and he sets up Chamon for his 12th goal of the season. Don't forget, some of them came for the Brayhead clan. So that was 1-1, and it was very much game alive at this stage. But jumping onto the play there, Mike Bayrak, he has missed the last 14 games, but he scores on his return, a third of the season for him. That was 2-1 and Coventry Blades have their noses in front. It soon became 3-1. Cowley with the feed from behind the net. The other assist going to Greg Lieb, and Brad Lieb, his brother, makes it a 3-1 scoreline. Only 32 seconds later, though, it is a giveaway from Chamblers, and Haynes there, jumping onto the play, feeds it to Pitten. And number 10 of the year for him. We have a scoreline of 3-2. A one-goal game. It is game alive. We went into the third period still with that one-goal advantage for the Coventry Blades. Strong work on the boards involving Dutium and Dolem. The Flyers are really strong. 
and somehow that one sneaks in. Hog, a 14th gold of the year. It's tied at 3-3. Three, three. Could there be a shock on the cards? The Flyers, who have struggled away from home all season, were suddenly level at 3-3. Three, three. But the Blades break down the ice. Effectively, this is three on one. And you thought the pass might come in, but Bayrak doesn't need anyone. He scores the second of the night. 45-38 gone and Coventry in front once more. And then in the corner, Cameron and Bruce. Bruce is Glasgow born, 23 years old and came through the Coventry junior system where they set up Bayrak for his hat trick and at 50-22, surely it's game over. And you see here, Bolesky breaking away, left hand side, he's fed by Guthrie and Guthrie mops up the rebound. Final score in the Sky Dome. Coventry six, five flyers three. We all love a little bit of Bolesky in his NHL brilliance, but I tell you what, Rick, that Guthrie for me, I don't think there's a better player. Maybe some as good, but there's not a better player in the league than that kid. No, he's, he's the way he skates. It's uh, NHL top three skating ability. Uh, he works extremely hard. He's, he's the guy that makes the Coventry boys go. And, of course, a welcome addition back. It's always great when you get your full lineup back. And Bayrak returns to the lineup, 14 weeks off with a bad back. That's a pretty bad back he must have had. Um, but to return with a hat trick, great confidence booster. Oh, great confidence booster. You just see, you see he's a pure shooter. Uh, you know, one's on a rebound, second one's off the rush, top glove. And then the third one, uh, he just waits for the goalie to open his legs and he buries it. So he knows where he's shooting. We're going to see that hat trick again in a second, but just a quick one. With his return and with Bolesky still being in the Coventry lineup, they now have one too many imports. So it's that old familiar story of somebody has to sit out. It's looking like it's going to be Gadis. It was Gadis who was uh, sat out in that five game. How hard is that for a coach when a guy sits out? You know, the argument is, oh, yes, he keeps everybody on their toes, but the reality is you've always got an unhappy player on your dressing room. Yeah, we had it for a while, and uh, it's, it's hard. It's, it's something coaches, we, at this, you know, here, we don't want to have to sit a guy. Uh, you know, what happens if you win, you know, the same guy keeps sitting. You always do have an unhappy player. Guys play a little tighter than they usually should. They're going, well, maybe it's going to be me next game. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a great situation for any coach to be into. OK, well, let's take a look at something that one coach would have been very happy. A Bayrak return and a Bayrak hat-trick. Talk us through these three. All right, here he just gets in front of the net. There's a bit of a shot right there. Just shoots the puck and it goes in. Sometimes that's the best way, isn't it? Well, hey, and let it go. You got to, you know, you got to get the puck to the net. If it goes to the net, you're going to you have a chance of scoring in here. Right here, this is off the rush. Uh, he's thinking shot all the way. He's just looking, waiting, waiting, waiting. It's just a great shot. Top glove, the goalie has no he's chance. He's scored wherever he's played, hasn't he? Oh yeah, Every, he, well you watch, watch here, just, just quick. Right there, waits for the goalie, shoots a five hole. Wherever he's gone, he's scored goals. Uh, he's, he's, got a, he's got a heavy shot, he can shoot the puck quick and he's very accurate. He played for the Belfast Giants, only lasted a short while. He played for Brayhead, didn't last you know, too long there, went to Europe, didn't work out. Is that, what is it about him that he keeps jumping from club to club? Because he's certainly got the ability, hasn't he? He's got a great ability and uh, Honestly, I can't answer that question. Uh, you're going to have to ask one of his old coaches why they don't bring him back. OK, we might do that on this show. Coming up soon. Got plenty to pick from. Right, let's go up north. Edinburgh Capitals taking on the Brayhead clan. Again, Brayhead, short man, short benched. The Edinburgh Capitals in a fine run of form. Could they pick up another two points, Chris? If the clan weren't short benched enough, they went into this game without starting netminder Garrett Zemlak. They then fell behind to Hartman's ninth goal of the year before Burnstall there scored a third goal of the campaign to level the game up at 1-1. But the caps of the form team at the moment in the Elite League, they've won in Sheffield and Nottingham recently. So how would they fare at home? And in the early stages, pretty well, because they made it 2-1, and it was Lineweather's seventh goal of the season. To period two, there was just one goal in front there. Yarolim, a 17th goal of the year. It was two goals ahead then for Edinburgh at the end of two periods. But... The Caps didn't have it all their own way, despite playing a short bench clan side. Clan scored again, 3-2 there. Goldie with his 16th goal of the season. They were all scored really on the doorstep. Another one right in front of the net. This time Patry, a first goal of his Edinburgh career. He makes it 4-2. But still, the clan weren't done. It's kept in the zone by Phillips. And Galbraith scores a 17th goal of the year. So that makes it 4-3 could be a twist in the finish and there could be an exciting finish 
but the clan pulled the netminder and Hartman into an empty net. He made sure and it's a win for the Caps at home and defeat for the clan on the road. Edinburgh 5, Brayhead 3. Another two points then for the Edinburgh Capitals. And, uh, well, we, we talked about Brayhead and what a lot of trouble they had from Cardiff up to Edinburgh in a night. But you can't even go to Edinburgh and places like that with just 11 or 12 skaters, can you? And the Caps at home on that big rink with the players they have, very tough to beat in Murrayfield. Very skilled team. Uh, they, they play a very defensive system. They wait for you to make a mistake. They get their two-on-ones, their three-on-ones. And they got five or six guys right now who are... They're deadly. They can score. They're snipers. They, they know how to put the puck away. And, of course, they got Yarlin, who's, who's going to be another 40-goal scorer again. And if you give them a chance, because those six that can score, perhaps they don't do too much work coming back the other way. But when they're going forward and when you, they're close in, they are all guys that can find the net, aren't they? They're all, yeah, they can score. But right now, why they're successful is those six guys who, with the, you know, the old days wouldn't really come back hard are working extremely hard. They're playing defense first. They're frustrating teams into making mistakes, and now then they're just then they're capitalizing on on the odd man rush. So, what's been the difference with the Edinburgh Capitals a month ago to the Edinburgh Capitals today? Is it is it just getting those two extra bodies in that gave them a little bit of depth, or is the coach now after 18 months he's in tune with the league, he knows how to win in this league? Well, you know, obviously the two new bodies they brought in are quality hockey players. They bought into their system. Their goaltending's playing very well. Uh, they're not they're not conceding a lot of goals, and and, and they're scoring enough to win. Let's take in another game then in Scotland. We'll go over to Kakadi, where the Cardiff Devils were in town. Fife, of course, on top of the tree at the moment. They've had a couple of great wins against the Sheffield Steelers, the Coventry Blaze, and of course last week against the Belfast Giants. This was going to be a tough one for Jared Adams' side. The Fife Arena was still buzzing from the previous week's performance against Belfast Giants. Could there be a repeat display against another informed side with Cardiff Devils coming to town? The first goal of the night went the home side's way. A first goal of his Fife career for Zach Caraview. Chamont and Haynes with the assist. So 1-0 at the end of the first period to the Fife Flyers. But into period two and the first goal for the Devils took a bad deflection. McRae scores the goal. Hill and Smith with the assists. 28 seconds into period two, we have a level game at 1-1. But as the period came to a close, it was a power play for the five flyers. And this one took some movement, it took some time, but it was well worked. And all alone at the back door, Casey Haynes with a 15th goal of a very impressive season. 2-1 then at the end of two periods. A rasping shot from Caraview made it 3-1. Gum and Dutian getting in on the assist there. That was impressive from him. A second goal. He waits all season for goals and then gets two in one game. Then the goal of the night from one end of the ice to the other. In terms of creation, great from Blight. And Josh Batch gets his second goal of the season. That was a terrific skate there from Blight. So that made it 3-2. But into an empty net was McAlpine to wrap the game up for the Flyers. Final score, 5-4, Cardiff 2. Another two points then for the five Flyers and the Cardiff side without Paul Bissonnette who flew home the next morning. Will he be back? That's a question that the Cardiff Devils fans will want answering very shortly. They'll certainly be hoping so. Um, no surprise now when five Flyers win at home. Doesn't matter who it's against, is it? No, solid hockey team. Uh... They got the the one big line that uh, does the majority of their scoring, uh, but they have three you know three lines. The other two lines do their job. They chip in here and there, but they play good defense. Their goalie's solid. Uh, they got some puck moving defensemen, and that's the recipe for success. Can I throw a little suggestion at you? Five Flyers form indirectly linked to the lack of Danny Stewart. No disrespect, Danny. However, Danny Stewart on the ice, important, but Danny Stewart now, perhaps taking practice since he's had this concussion, being more involved in the coaching, being the guy on the bench who can calmly uh, stand there and, and give instruction, has that made a difference to the Fireflies? Because I, I see some kind of coloration there. Well, Danny Stewart's... Uh... He's a hockey man and he knows how to win and how to perform and how he gets his team going, and perhaps without the emotion of playing. Right there, that's that's an emotion. Danny's a very emotional guy. With him on the bench, uh, you know, making sure the guys, uh, you know, stay sharp, stay focused. Uh, 
you know, they'll, 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 they'll feed off him and, 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 he'll, and he'll make some good hockey decisions on the bench to help him win games. And that's something, hey, that's why you ended up in Nottingham because, you know, the situation there was that there wasn't anybody taking control behind the bench. They now have a guy who is taking control behind the bench in Fife and I think the results are showing maybe because of that. Well, if it's working, well, Danny maybe have to stay behind the bench, but I'm sure, he, you know, yeah, he's doing a great job for him right now, I'm, but I'm sure Danny wants to get back out I'm there sure and he playing. Does. He's an old warrior and he wants to get out there slashing guys. <laughs> He misses it. One guy, like the number 28 bush, you wait all year and then two come at once. Caravu, he scored a bad and he scored a good and didn't they? We'll uh, take a look at his two opening goals in the Elite League. Took him till December, but certainly the second was a great one, wasn't it? Well, the first one, you know, there's never a bad goal right here. He's a defense and he's behind the net, the other team's net, and he just throws it out blind and hits the goalie in the back and goes in. He'll take it. There's number one. And the second one was an absolute bullet. Oh, well, first of all, clean draw right back on the tape, top shelf. You know, he gets all of it. The goalie has no chance. Yeah. Congratulations to the Five Flyers. A great two points. Time for us to take a break now. When we come back, well, perhaps the biggest game of the weekend. It was at the NIC in Nottingham, where Strax was with his Panthers, taking on Big Doug and the Belfast Giants. Don't go in, mate. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlights show here on Sky Sports. Without further ado, the biggest game of the weekend. First versus second, Panthers versus Giants, Chris Ellis. A massive game at the National Ice Centre and the Giants went ahead short-handed. The first of three short-handed goals on the night. A terrific finish there from Keith, a sixth goal of the season. In celebration times for the Giants, they led 1-0 after period one. To period two and Nottingham came back on the power play. Fox and Francis working that one for Graham to score his 15th goal of the season. The leading Nottingham Panthers goal scorer had another goal to his tally and the celebrations were beginning in Nottingham because they were turning the screw. So that was 1-1 in period two. Things got feisty in front of the net. Players got to know each other. Push and shove, really. Kelsey Wilson, the new signing, scored in Hull on his debut. Just having a word there, nothing more. So Nottingham at this stage, 1-1, but you could see they were turning the screw. Graham there wins the puck. Benedict involved. And Ling scores a great goal, a 15th goal of the campaign for him. So he, too, is level now with Graham in goal scored for the Nottingham Panthers. Again, a turnover by the Giants. And Myers has a shot touched in by Werner. That one short-handed at 28-21. And then again, two minutes later, Benedict, terrific finish against his former club. Short-handed again, it's 4-1 Nottingham. But Christensen then called a timeout. In period three, though, Nottingham continued to lay seeds to the Belfast goal. Beckett there from left side. He made it 5-1. Lakovic and Gallivant with the assists on that one. And then on a power play with the game going towards the close, Ling and Clark set up Matthew Myers. He's just in front of the doorstep there, waiting, and he redirects that one to make it a final goal of the night for Nottingham. Final score, Panthers 6, Belfast Giants 1 and the Panthers open up a lead at the top of the table. Now that's a beating for Doug Christensen and the Belfast Giants. Uh, from those highlights there, it looked like your team just played very, very well for 60 minutes. Yeah, we, 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 we went out we executed our game plan. Uh, our special teams were, were very good. We got two shorthanded goals, two power play goals. Uh, the only goal we gave up was a shorthanded goal. But uh, no, we're, uh, we're playing well right now. The guys got a lot of confidence and, uh, you know, Killer's doing his job. Nottingham have always been a team that if they can sense a weakness, they, they, they're a team that can score goals. We've talked about the offensive talents they have before. No Sandrock, no Mason. Did that make a difference or were you just that good on the night? Oh, we were, we, I think we played very well on the night. Uh, you know, of course, uh, we, we wanted to, 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 to be very aggressive on the four check, knowing that they were missing a couple key defensemen and uh, the boys went out there and they, they did exactly what they had to do. We talk about teams that have one, two, three scorers. You seem to have seven, eight, nine 10 scorers, that second period was a little bit of a rout. Let's take a look at the uh, the four goals you got in that middle session, including those two short-handers. Talk us through them. 
All right, here we're on the power play. This is a this is a great fake by Fox over to to Dave to, to Brucey e. Graham, and uh, you know you can tell why he's a goal scorer just the one time. And right here, shorthanded. Oh, this isn't shorthand. This is Linger's goal, and that's just a great shot. No backlift on that at all, was it? No, he shoots it off his front foot. Uh, Murphy doesn't even know he's going to shoot it, and these are the two shorthanded ones coming right up here. And uh, Werner does a great job of driving the net, made the distraction, and. Myers throws it to the net, and then right here we're just we're, we're playing hard and we're being very aggressive in the neutral zone. Turnover, just a well, look at soft hands, and just a great finish by Benedict. Just seeing one of those goals there from from Werner seems to be a bit of an unsung hero. Everybody you speak to in the sport says, "Hey, the Panthers have got themselves a great defenseman in that Werner." But you don't kind of see the headlines, the posters. You, you don't look a flash arrow, but he's probably as important a player as you've got. Very good hockey player. Uh... We use them in every situation, power play, penalty, kill, last, you know, last minute down, last minute up. Uh, extremely, extremely smart player, can move the puck, skates, just flawless skater. And, and for a little guy, he's incredibly strong. So that's a good combination if you're a, a defenseman. OK, well, we have seen all the action from last weekend. Let's just have a recap, though, on the results. They started, of course, last Friday at the uh, Odyssey Arena in Belfast with the Giants beating the Cardiff Devils by four goals to one. And then on Saturday, Cardiff five to one over the Clan, the Blaze six to three over the Flyers, Nottingham three one victorious in Hull and the Steelers three one at home against the Dundee Stars. We flip forward another 24 hours Sunday. And of course that game between Sheffield and Dundee was postponed after the Sheffield Steelers bus broke down in Gretna. Nobody got married either. Five Flyers for the Cardiff Devils, two in Kakadi. We saw the goals from that earlier. And the Edinburgh Capitals, five, the Brayhead Clan, three. And there was Monday night hockey action as well, with the whole Stingrays uh, going down at home to the Belfast Giants by three goals to one. And by mistake, I missed that one above it, of course. Nottingham, six to one over the Belfast Giants in the game of the weekend. So let's take a look and see how that affects the two conference standings. Very tight in both conferences at the moment. We'll start off with the Erdhart. Belfast lead the way, tied on points with the Nottingham Panthers, followed by Sheffield, Cardiff and Coventry with those two or three games in hand. And as you can see there as well, Brayhead, Dundee, Hull, Edinburgh and Fife. Let's throw them all into the bag and see how they come out. The Nottingham Panthers, four points clear. That's worrying if you're Belfast, Sheffield, Cardiff or Coventry chasing that league title. But take a look at the bottom as well. The Edinburgh Capitals have jumped over the Hull Stingrays. I've got a sneaking feeling both Edinburgh and Fife will both make the playoffs. Anything you see there uh, of interest? Nah, it's just, it, it's, it's very tight, the top to bottom. Yeah. One good weekend, you stay where you are. One bad weekend and you move down pretty quick. Yeah, and also, you don't have an easy weekend these days. Now, if you're not prepared to play, you can go into any rink, home or away. And if you're not mentally ready, mentally focused, you're going to lose that hockey game because they're into bad team in this elite league, is there? No, there's uh, every team's. Uh, every team this year has got a decent goalie. Every team's got one line that can score. So if your your goalie's on and your top line's playing well you got a chance of winning. Well, lots of good games last week. Lots of great games coming up this week. Let's take a look at the fixtures coming to a rink near you. We'll start off with Saturday. Paul Stingray is taking on the Sheffield Steelers. Nottingham against the Five Flyers. Brayhead against the Cardiff Devils. And then up in the Gardner Conference at Murrayfield, the Edinburgh Capitals taking on the Dundee Stars. And if Edinburgh could ever win that game, puts a little bit of pressure on Jeff Hutchins and his Dundee outfit. Sunday, Cardiff versus Hull. Dundee again, a double uh, game up in Scotland for them. They are at home this Sunday against the Five Flyers. Sheffield take on Belfast. What a game that could be. Five o'clock at the Motor Point Arena. And at the Sky Dam, the Coventry Blaze take on Strax's Nottingham Panthers. Wow, you'll be able to see those games. All the highlights, all the goals in next week's show. Saturday at 12 a.m. But don't worry, set the alarm early on Saturday. You can get the repeat. Sky Sports 2 on Saturday and Sky Sports 3 on uh, the 7 a.m. show, our repeat show. I'll tell you what, uh, lots of games coming up over Christmas. It's our busy time, I understand, folks. If you just take a look below us, you'll be able to see the uh, skysports.com website where all the uh, Christmas games will be... Uh, you've got the old forward slash. Always wanted to do that ever since Anton Dick did it on the Jungle Show. Um, Christmas... 
the new year period, lots of games crammed in. Doesn't matter whether it's football, whether it's rugby, whether it's hockey. This is the business time, isn't it? This four or five week period now is going to separate the men and the boys. Yeah, it's a, it's a very important uh, time for all sports. But, you know, let's talk about our sport. Uh, mm. Everyone's going to play five or six games in the next two weeks. You get hot. You, you, you know what, you put yourself in a good position. Depth is key as well, isn't it, in such amounts of games in such a short period of time? Oh, depth, uh, you know, injuries. Uh, so you want, to get in, you want to get through this Christmas period on a hot streak with no injuries. OK. Folks, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and all of that. But go and take in a game with the Elite Ice Hockey League. There's some crackers coming up. You don't want to miss them. We'll be back next week. Thanks for giving up your time tonight. Good night. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.